So now we're going to go through analysing your data in R using the Geomorph package. Functions in this package allow you to read, manipulate and digitise landmark data. You can generate shape variables via procrastus analysis for points, curves and surface data. Um, you can uh, perform statistical analysis of shape variation and covariation. You can also provide graphical depictions of shapes. And then we can also look at allometry and sex versus species. So the first thing to do is open up R. So the first thing you do in R is to clear your working space. You don't need to do this if you haven't used R before and you're doing it so any previous code doesn't interfere down the line. Then you need to install the required package GMOF and then load R. So install GMOF. So now we're going to load that package, then we can start our working directory or you can just write it in to your code. So. The next thing you want to do is import your landmark file and give it a name. You can see it's come up with no curves detected because the example I've used doesn't have any curved landmarks and it's um, come in correctly. So if I wanted to show the data that I've brought in there. It's just got all my landmarks there. So the next thing I want to do is import some classifiers. So you can just add in a classifier file, um, but there can be problems with this. So often the simplest solution is the best. So you just create a file such as this one. And here with With each of the IDs that will correspond with your landmarking, I've got locality, year, species, latitude, and longitude, but you can't just import it like this. So the best thing to do is just copy all of that and then transpose it like so. so. And then you can use the ampersand function to create a list like so. And then you'll be able to import that in using species factor. So just to show an example, so I've got locality factor thing. and then in there I'm going to paste in everything I've got there, take away the empty ones. And then I just enter like so. And then I can check if that is a factor. True, so it is a factor. And then you do this for all of the classifiers that you're interested in. So.
So once you've added in all these classifiers, the next step is to do the generalized Procrustes um, analysis. So create a new name for these new coordinates that we're doing. And use that function. So now we could do plot our original coordinates. Just like that. And then that's what you get. But if we plot these new coordinates, we get that. Uh, we can also run a principal components analysis. And then we can plot this. We could also colour it by species or oh, anything else that you're interested in, like so. You can do a summary so you can see the eigenvalues, see um, how much the portion of the variance each component is responsible for. Right there, so you've got 23.6%, 13.6%, etc. Now, for my fish file, I don't have enough female specimens to show you how to use species versus sex and potential sexual dimorphism in body shape. So I'm going to use some other data as an example. And it's exactly the same process, but these are bat mandibles rather than entire fish specimens. So I've read in that new data, and then I'm going to do the same as before uh, and add all my classifiers. Okay, so I've added my data and I've read in all my classifiers. I need to also do a um, progressive analysis on this data. Okay, so I'm four. Um, I was to just plot that to show you what it looks like. See the general shape and all the different individuals. So next we're going to create a data frame from the shape data using sex and species classifiers. So we can explore everything a bit more in depth. So in order to do the following functions, we need to use this data frame. And we'll look at the relationship between centroid size and shape variation of this example, the bat mandible. So we're going to use this function um, to perform the process novus to assess our statistical hypothesis looking at shape variation and covariance. So give this a name. Then we're going to look at our coordinates. And then using the summary function, we can see if there is a significant relationship between size and shape. And you can see it appears that there is. 
a significant association between shape and size. So to visualize this relationship, there are many functions. Um, we could use the plot function with a regression type, or we could use plot allometry, and we'd end up getting the same graph. Um, we could use prediction lines, which are first principle component scores of fitted values from the pro um, plot DLM, or we could use regression scores, which are standardized projected shape scores along the axis defined by the regression of shape or size. So. And we will get this graph here with the predictor line. Um, we can also, if we like, colour this by species. Like so. Um, then we could also use the regression scores instead of just using this different method like so. Um, so if we were to use this instead and not use the allometry model And you can see we'll get the same graph there. So an important detail with these plots is that the predictor line and the um, regression score are model-based projections of shape data and changing the model changes the outcome of the plot. We can also perform a two-block partial least squares analysis to find the correlation between shape and size which is not based on a particular model. You can see that there does seem to be significance, and if I plot that as well. So we can also do a plot of the common allometric component, which will always be the same as the PLS plot, irrespective of the type of shape allometry model. So, just colour that as well. And you can also colour this by other things as well. So, you could colour by sex if you wanted. We can also append a size factor to a matrix of shape variables and perform principal moments analysis called a size shape PCA.
like so. Um, so those are really good ways of testing allometry and presenting those results. So we can also do some more complex allometry um, analyses. So, And then we can do a summary of this, like so. We look at the influence of sex and centroid size and sex species. So what we can do is we can use the function pairwise and do a pairwise test, which can be used to calculate the pairwise comparisons between group levels. So I do. So you can see the pairwise distances between the means. Um, we could also do this. We can do the same for species, which is sex. Um, something else we can explore is morphological disparity. For this for the entire data set, the entire data set coming to allometry without covariates, and basically we'll end up getting cross disvariances and some um, test of significance, etc. So, if I was to do this for the entire data set accounting for allometry, without covariates, using the overall mean. So, you can see with these results here, we've got the cross differences for each of the groups. So, we've got um, this species, the females of this species, the males of this species, and the unknown sexes of this species, etc. You can see the pairwise absolute differences between each of these groups. And then you can see the significance of these differences. So, for example, female. Um, P. auritus um, have significantly different um, 
distances between the percrustean spheroids than um, female dobentoni. Um, so you can do this for all your groups and get some really interesting results.